I have a bit of a problem and that problem is exactly this big. This window is super leaky and well the seals and the all they're all pretty much trash. It's supposed to be a finish window meaning it has like an aluminium frame on the outside and a wooden frame that I have already taken off and they're supposed to move together. This room didn't used to be a living space. This was part of the exterior of the house, so to speak. But since then I have basically cut a hole and made it into a living space. So now that means I also have to fix this window because it is very leaky. And I have to fix this before the winter comes. Hey, it's me from the future. This is a spoiler, but I did not finish before winter. first order of business is going to be gluing up the stock material. If you have seen any of my previous videos, you've probably seen me use this material before. Somehow, whenever I mention it's pine, there's always a few armchair engineers who tell me that I should have used oak and it's never gonna last. Well, to those people I have to say, not everyone lives where you live. Different regions have different commonly used materials and if I had the budget to build it out of white oak and then paint it, well, I wouldn't be building windows. I would be driving my Ferrari. I just wanted to get that out of the way since this engineered wood is more than adequate to use. And it kind of hurts the pine tree's feelings when you diss it like that. In fact, in this case, it really won't be directly exposed to the elements anyway, but more on that later. Since I'm designing the new frame around already existing windows, I had to design it with very strict measurements laid out in the software. The only real thing I couldn't change with the new design was the exterior profile. Since I will be reusing the aluminium frame that clips onto the profile with some plastic clips. And I need the profile to be exactly the same as it was. There was really no easy way of measuring all the little angles on the spot, so I took a little souvenir instead. On the old frame, the seals were paper thin and pretty much useless. So in my new design, I tried to find the best seals I could get. I probably read through countless pages of specification data for weather stripping. Most of the high-end strips are all routed in. And honestly, I don't think I ever want to mess around with the adhesive ones ever again. I probably ended up spending around 100 bucks for all the seals in total, which is definitely a bit on the higher end considering it's all just for one window.
Now, since the window pane that goes into the wooden frame is quite heavy, and all that weight will be resting on the bottom half of the frame, I need to have some good strong joinery to hold it all together. I went with a half lap joint, held together by polyurethane glue and a hardwood towel just in case. So once again, on the old window the ventilation grid, which I just also learned a new word for, a lure, was just done a bit sloppy. My design was to fill the door with insulation foam and to have a removable louver on the exterior side. Making the frame at the door is basically all the same steps I took on the window, just smaller. This is also the time when I started to run out of room, working with such big objects. So I set up temporary joists where I can mount it and work on it vertically. The initial plan was to have the whole thing painted white, but when I realized I didn't have enough plywood to fill the center, I decided to add some contrasting color by making the inside from the same wood I will later use to make the lure. The door did end up looking a bit like a vault door, since it has almost 50mm thick insulation inside. But no matter what they say, size does matter, at least when it comes to insulation foam. While it's starting to look like a window now, I'm still missing the centerpiece of the whole thing, and that's the lure. I didn't mention it before, but the actual lumber I'm using for it is kinda special. This is called thermo aspen, and the thermo in front of it means it's being thermally treated. The lumber is baked in an oven at high degrees and low oxygen to basically bake out any organic things that make the wood unstable. The result is a darkened brownish lumber with a much better weather, moisture and insect resistance. And well, much higher price tag as well. In my country, Majority of households have a sauna in them, in which thermal wood is widely used. But I haven't seen this process being thought about a lot, so I'm curious. Is it popular where you are from? Do you see thermally treated products on the shelf of your local lumberyard? I'd love to read it in the comments. I recently got a 3D printer, and I've been printing little things here and there throughout this build like this little spacer I use to set the right distance when I'm marking the door hinges. But what really sealed the usefulness as a tool for me was this template. I designed from scratch and baked in the oven for a few hours until I had a real world product I could hold in my hands. This will basically help me get perfectly spaced 40 degree dado cuts. And since it needs to be mirrored, there's a left and a right side template. I will upload the files in the description for anyone that wants to print their own, along with the specs of the bushings and the bit I used.
Another thing I printed was these little standoffs for the lure. I needed it to be a little off-center to match the aluminum trim. So these are very much only useful in this specific case. And I won't be uploading these ones. I'm using multi-point locks for window and the door. Meaning, in total I have to route in 13 strike plates. And for that, you guessed it, I printed another template, which I will also upload. The last little piece of hardware which makes this from a regular window into an actual finished window is this sliding pivot point that makes them work in unison. And that also means the exterior frame does not need a separate locking system like it had before. Some of you might have already got it but the whole window is now on wheels. The main reason why the whole thing stretched from the end of summer into winter months is due to the fact that I also have to do my day job as well. And when things get busy, I roll the window out of the way, just like my problems. And once I have time again, I roll it back out and start where I left off, which is painting. I'm using 2K acid catalyzed paints for this one. This product is very durable and it's flexible as well. So it's meant to be used as an exterior wood coating. But most importantly for me at least, is the drying time. In perfect conditions, I can sand and spray another coat in an hour and have the whole thing basically primed and painted in one day. Sadly, I don't live in perfect conditions, so it took a bit more than that. But the major downside for this type of product is the fact that it's pure poison to spray. And in good consciousness, I can't really recommend it for anyone to try, unless you already know what you're getting yourself into. But I can't argue with the results. And boy, do they turn out good. Of course, there were some mishaps along the way. And one of those was the fact that I thought I could paint over the old unknown silicon on the aluminum frame. But the adhesion to it wasn't quite there. And I was afraid the water might start seeping under the paint, eventually causing problems. So I laid a new, even bigger bead of silicon over it. Hopefully fixing the problem. The last big upgrade over the old window I had planned was to have custom ordered Venetian blinds made specifically for double framed windows. It wasn't really even supposed to be part of this video since the window was supposed to be already installed at, by this point. But here I am weeks behind schedule on the night before I'm going to install the window. The actual install itself though, I could not film. There's only a handful of daylight hours in the winter where I live. And on top of that, there was a storm warning on the day of the install. So things got pretty hectic. There was really no time for me to swing around the camera. Luckily, I managed to get it in place and foamed in before things got really bad. And it was already proving to be a huge improvement over the old window. Once the storm died down, I could put on some finishing touches on the outside. Well, finishing might be a wrong word to use here. 
since it's really not finished at all. I still have to trim the exterior side, but that will have to wait for another day. And on the inside the situation is even more complicated. Before I can even start thinking about putting up drywall, I want to do another crazy reinvent the wheel type project. And that's gonna be me trying to make a custom bucket door between these two brick walls. So if you like seeing these kind of unnecessary overcomplicated projects, well then maybe I'll see you around.